Lights! Hi folks, Thomas Henson here with thomashenson.com and today is another episode of Big Data, Big Questions. And so today I'm excited to announce my seventh course, count it off for me, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven! This is my seventh, seven, Pluralsight course and this one is all about Splunk. So this one is called Installing and Configuring Splunk. And so really excited to talk about how it's the first one in a multi-part series that we're going to do. It's called a learning path from a Pluralsight perspective. It's going to take you all through Splunk. So I know I've signed on to do some, some of the learning path. And so we'll see how far that goes. But I will tell you that um, I've got two more coming out and they should be coming out fairly quickly. So I'm working through these to kind of take us on a Splunk journey. And so it's a little bit different than if you've taken my machine generator or analyzing machine data with Splunk course at Pluralsight. This is going to take more of an administrator's perspective and kind of focusing in on some of the baselines for setting up your environment and really being able to dig down and go deep into, you know, whether it be searches, whether it be reporting and dashboards. But this first one, all about how to install Splunk. So it's broken up into really three main components. So the first thing is we're going to talk and go through you know, what Splunk is, what machine generated data is, and all the different ways that you can use Splunk. So there's some different options out there, whether it be, you know, on-prem or a cloud solution, but then also kind of really talking about the architecture and really what Splunk is. So go through all that in the first part of the course. And then in the second part, so the second area that we really focus in on is kind of what the roles and responsibilities are. So, you know, what is a Splunk architect? What is a Splunk user? And kind of what bucket do those roles and those jobs fit into? And is it something that you'd be interested in? So I try to keep it, you know, somewhat career focused because if you're, you know, if you're investing time and in watching a course and maybe even learn, you know, learning a development tool or learning, you know, a software package or anything like that, then definitely want to talk about, you know, what it, you know, what it, what it means to you to be able to use that, whether it's in your day to day job or whether it's something that you really use full time. So um, really took that portion of it. And then third, really where we dig into the course and the meat of the course is setting up Splunk in your own environment. So we go walk through, you know, how to set it up from a Windows perspective, right? And then what the options are, you know, you can set it up in Windows 10. Do you want to run it there? Probably not, right? Like if you're talking about using Splunk Enterprise, right? So you're going to want to set that up in Windows 2012 or something above. So there's some recommendations out there for it. So we walk through how to do that. Also, very important to learn how to install it on a Linux machine because you're going to be, even if you're not using a full-blown instance on a Linux machine, you're probably going to set up many, many, many different folders to be able to get your data. So we make sure that we walk through doing that. And since I'm going through that one, you know it's got to be from the command line. So we do it all through the CLI, have a little fun there. And then second, uh, no, third, actually, we go through setting it up uh, in a Mac environment. So walk through, you know, just setting it up uh, from that perspective. And there's some different options there, too. So there is, you know, there's an install that you can walk through in a GUI. And then there's also something you can do kind of behind the scenes, just like you would in Linux. So three, you know, three different environments that we walk through setting up because this is really the key focus on building our environment so that when we start to get to, you know, building out our own searches and getting more in depth in the course, you want to have that rock solid, you know, environment set up and you want to know how to set it up in, you know, in your enterprise environment too. So um, I hope you'll join me, you know, in your journey on Splunk. If you're interested, make sure you check out my Splunk course um, here at Pluralsight. It's going to be, it's going to be a really fun journey and I'm really excited to be doing a learning path and kind of go through that experience as well. So join me on it if you're, you know, if you're a Pluralsight member, if not, it's definitely out there. It's something I would recommend. But if you have any questions, make sure you put them in the comment section here below or reach out to me on uh, Twitter at hashtag big questions. No, no, big data questions. No, big data, big questions. Man, that's a little rough. Or Thomas Henson forward slash big hyphen questions. And I will answer them the best I can. Until next time, keep learning. Did I clap? I think I clapped.